everybody. Here we are to do a writing update. I haven't really been doing any writing and the only day that I've written this week was Monday. I was not really enjoying myself. I kind of left off in the middle of a scene and I haven't looked back at it yet. This week has not been the easiest week. I've just been like kind of mentally exhausted this week so I haven't really been doing much drafting. I've been implementing this thing called read a chapter of Demigods by Eliza Robertson before I draft and I found that that's really been helping. This point of view switch has been really difficult for me. I hope that I can sink my teeth a little bit further into the story and Harrison's side of the story. I think the reason why I've been struggling with it is because it's just grander than I'm used to. There's a lot of unknowns and I won't know these things until I write, but I'd like to get back onto the drafting train. But at this point, I feel like I've crashed a little bit from my last writing high, which is normal. I'm just gonna do some reading and hopefully that sparks some drama and then I can use that to draft and just finish my scene because I'm going on to a bit more of like an interesting part. Hi everyone, it's been a long time since I last updated you guys. I know it's just basically the beginning of this vlog, but I haven't really been vlogging. So I just wanted to update you guys on writing. So I was actually struggling a lot with feeding habits. I just wasn't really feeling it. I couldn't really break into the point of view in the way that I had hoped, but then Sarah and I had a discussion and one of the ideas that we spoke about really worked for me, and so I ended up writing a scene and I wrote about, I think about 2,000 words in one day about two or two or three days ago, and so that was pretty successful. However, since then, I haven't really been feeling the project again. I'm kind of in this blah with it right now. I think I haven't felt immense success with my writing in a while. I mean, I had a 10,000 word week with feeding habits and then it kind of just flopped from there. And because of that, I feel like I have been less willing to write because there is no success hinging on my writing sessions. And I know I'm trying to get over that because I want to write even without the outcome come of success. Sometimes I'm just men mentally like not available for that. I don't know if any of you guys feel this too. Sometimes you just need to succeed at something. I don't know if that's the healthiest mindset. I definitely feel it. Like sometimes you don't have the spoons for failure and so that's kind of how it felt with feeding habits. It's just nice to feel some sort of str- now I'm realizing that I'm just relying on my work to make me feel better. Fleeting moments of success but that's just honestly how I've been feeling lately. Yesterday I wrote 98 words <laughs> and it was like about a paragraph. It felt like I wrote a thousand words but it was 98 words. That was it. I stopped writing very early on in the day and I was kind of feeling glum, kind of weighed down, like I really, really wanted the taste of success and I'm realizing that's very fleeting and I shouldn't define my successes on fleeting success. However, I can't help it. And so yesterday my grandma wanted to show me what she was doing in the garden and while out there I sat in my backyard hammock and I was just chilling there. It was just me and you know, the birds were chirping. It was edging into evening and you know, it was a bit windy and I was just rocking on this hammock and I got an idea for a short story. And I've been really, really trying to get an idea for a short story for the last few days. I like writing short fiction. It makes me feel very productive and again, fleeting successes, but <laughs> I, I really needed it. I just wanted to throw myself into a short story, but I couldn't come up with any ideas. But yesterday I got an idea. I'm, I'm not really sure exactly what it's about. The story right now, the working title is Slaughter the Animal. I'm not going to talk too much about what it's about because I really don't know. But the opening is probably one of my favorite openings of all time. And I feel like this could turn into a novel. So I'm pretty happy with it. And so it's like my first story that's like set explicitly in Canada, which is kind of fun. I am kind of a stickler for like setting my stories in Canada. Apparently I'm Canadian. I don't know why I've never done that before, but this is the first one. So some of it is set in Ontario and then most of it is set in British Columbia. I'm happy with the vibes. I kind of got stuck again. And so I'm not feeling the hottest, but I'm going to make a latte or something for myself and maybe I will sit outside. I kind of just need the quiet and to just be alone in my head for a while to draft. That's kind of what I have been craving. 
and so I'm going to try to satisfy that craving and I know if I don't draft the story today and almost finish it, like I need to draft most of it, I will abandon it. I have learned something about myself and it is if I do not write a story in about one or two sittings, like three at the maximum that are very successive, like not long breaks in between, not even like a day, I will not finish the short story. This is very relevant with my short story called Phantom Lose in D minor. I have been drafting that story for a year and a half and I haven't finished it because I've worked on it in too too many pieces and so I haven't been able to capture my footing so I've learned something about myself with short fiction you know I'm pretty new to short fiction I've only written a few short stories and so I've learned that I really benefit from writing short stories in a shorter amount of time so I'm gonna try to get my teeth sunken into it I don't really know what my idea is right now and I'm kind of nervous honestly to experiment but I'm gonna try to like let go of those tethers and just do it and follow the rhythm of the story yesterday I read a stunning article by one of my favorite writers of all time, Eliza Robertson. I think the article is rhythm as a metaphor for presence in fiction or prose fiction and I haven't read like an academic I guess style article since I was in school so it was really fun actually I felt very scholarly reading it but it's a wonderful deep dive into rhythm in prose and as somebody who is driven by rhythm that was so exciting you know I made a realization yesterday that writing to me is less of sort of this obtuse typing and like just literally writing out words and more of a becoming and what I mean by that is you know I always have pictured writing like this. To me writing is more like sculpting and when I feel like I'm in a good writing session I am peeling back layers of like soapstone, I'm carving everything. The more I write and the deeper I get into a story, the more immersed I am, the more the sculpture clarifies. It's less of this tactile typing or writing on a piece of paper, it's literally like a constructing. You know I learned that in my writing class at university, like writers construct, painters describe, and that's kind of what I have been leaning into honestly it was really fun to read that because that's what my process has always been like yeah I'm gonna go write right now I'm about 1400 words into the story so I've written quite a bit and all of my short stories are pretty short the longest one I've written was 5,000 words and I wrote one that was like 4,300 but most of them are pretty short I mean I haven't written that many short stories I think maybe four or five and so I think this is gonna be a bit longer but we're gonna have to see I'm just gonna sort of feel it out. Uh, I finished my reread of Demigods by Eliza Robertson yesterday. It was so good. I love that book. Eliza Robertson is a master at her craft. I love her style a lot so it's really inspiring to be able to read her prose whenever I can. So it's a nice cool day today so I'm hoping that I can get some words done and not tunnel in on myself because I've been doing that the last few days in terms of writing I've just been tunneling in on every little thing that's not working and not really focusing on the things that I like so I'm gonna try to do that. Hey everyone so it's been a while since I last filmed an update for you guys. The last time I filmed was last week and honestly I think that was the last time I wrote something. I can't really remember what happened between last Tuesday and today is Monday. I don't know what day exactly it is somewhere near the 20th of July. A lot has been happening. By a lot, I mean very little. Sarah and I, for a good chunk of last week, spent a lot of our time together cleaning out our room. So if you don't know, I share a room with my sister. A lot of people living in my house. That's just a thing you do when you have a bigger immediate family. And so we've always shared this room and we're trying to create a bit more of a usable space. I personally don't spend any time in here. It looks really nice in here now. So anyway, what I'm saying is I don't, I, had, I was busy last week and I didn't do any writing. I got a little bit stuck in my scene. I had implemented this party scene where Harrison goes to a party in Las Vegas and that was really easy for me to write but I haven't started really the scene after that because I just haven't felt like it. <laughs> I haven't really connected yet to Harrison. I'm connecting a little bit more with him. And so feeding habits, I haven't really made much progress on. I wanted to finish it by the end of the month. I have 10 days left in this month, so I can do it. It's just gonna be a lot of work. I have about 20,000 words left. I'm not gonna make the goal, which is a little bit sad. I wanted to talk to you because I'm about to start on a story I've been working on called Slaughter the Animal. It started off quite well. 
I would say. I was so engrossed in the idea. I was praying to the short story gods for days <laughs> that I could get an idea. And I got an idea when I was sitting on my hammock outside in my backyard. Essentially, the story starts in the same place where I was. So my dog was looking at me through a fence and I was on the hammock and she was like, barking at me and that is the exact image of like the, the beginning and so the story right now i was talking to sarah and my friend shaylin yesterday and god sends god sends i love those ladies they do so much for me they help me break through the story because i kind of got stuck with what was happening i was getting overwhelmed because i haven't written a short piece since march and that was for primary organs and primary organs came about absolutely randomly. I didn't, I wasn't trying to write a short story. It was a little bit difficult to break back into short fiction, but I was discussing with them yesterday and they both gave me some wonderful ideas. And so I'm feeling very clarified with the story, but it's like 5 p.m. and I've done nothing all day because to be, to be fair, the construction started today. So my routine has changed and it's a little bit weird for me. My routine has been the same since I got home. So it's been like three months of the same routine and now the routine has changed. So it's a bit bizarre to get onto a different routine, but the construction's done for the day. So I'm going to go and write now. I've been feeling really close to my boys, Alona and Harris in the last few days because I've been getting in a lot of asks, I guess, about them. And so yesterday I wrote an entire summer summary of their relationship from beginning to end. So if you ever wanted to know the haps, the tea on Lonan and Harrison's relationship in fostered from beginning to end. I will link the timeline in the description if you want to keep up to date for feeding habits like moth work stuff. That will be in the description. I've been doing a lot of like blog work the last day or so. I kind of want a social media break so I think I'm gonna just spend the rest of the day writing. I'm a little anxious to start. Honestly, I have real big problems starting things. I get very anxious to do it and it takes me a really long time to start things. Things. It's been hours. But anyway, I'm gonna go do that. Hi everyone. So I just wanted to do an update on how writing went tonight. So I didn't actually do as much as like I thought I was going to or I hoped like yesterday. I kind of realized like halfway through the day that I was not gonna be as productive as I thought it was gonna be because today was a bit strange. Like I said, there was construction and so the construction kind of disrupted my routine, which made me feel a little bit weird, a bit anxious. I did, however, make progress on both of the projects, just not very much, but that's okay. It's better to do something than nothing. So for Slaughter the Animal, the short story, essentially the story follows Dorothy and she meets this girl named Virginia. Originally there was only Virginia, but then I realized that I wanted Virginia to have a twin brother. And this is actually the first time I've ever written twins. I'm a twin myself. I'm an identical twin. These are fraternal twins, but I've never written twins before. And so her twin brother Carver showed up in a scene that I was writing. So I just had to edit him into the story just so that I felt more comfortable with his presence. I know that the story is leading up to an event. I thought it was going to be longer than it currently is and I think I might be rushing into the event so I have to figure out some pacing and whatever. I'm kind of rusty. But as for feeding habits, I worked on one like scene that I've been working on for a while. I just haven't really gotten to doing it. It's just been in my head for a bit where Reeve and Harrison jump like into this garden. They like jump the fence into this garden because they want to give a water burial to this kid that Harrison finds that is unfortunately dead and the ground is too hard for them to dig up because it's winter, well, the end of winter. And so they go and like, they kind of set it a sail on the fountain and then they drink and shenanigans and things you probably shouldn't do in a garden you're not supposed to be in. I didn't really write that much. What I did write is kind of bare bones. It's not like my favorite, but I'm happy I sunk my teeth into it a bit and hopefully I can continue. I probably wrote maybe like 100 or 200 words. I came upstairs to read. I am reading The Cure for Death by Life lightning by Gail Anderson Dargatz, I think is her name. And I got that book when I was at my university. I thrifted it. And so I've been meaning to read it because I brought it all the way across the country with me back home here. So I'm hoping that I can finish it because I read the first chapter and I like it. So I'm really excited. Reading has really helped me with my prose, which funny. Hopefully I will get more writing done tomorrow. I'm really crossing my fingers that the muse bestows itself upon me, but I'll see you guys tomorrow.
this is a new piece of furniture, a new addition into the room. If you can't tell, I am sitting on an armchair, which means Sarah and I officially have an armchair in our room. It's just as wonderful as you think it is. It's so comfortable. It's a recliner and it fits this tiny space perfectly. A few updates on writing. I have been doing a separate writing vlog for this, but I finished a short story called Phantom Limbs in D minor. I think I'm just gonna end up calling it just Phantom Limbs. And so I've been working on that short story for over a year since I was in high school actually. And I finally <laughs> finished the draft last week. I have a separate vlog of me writing that story from beginning to ending, which means you can see 17 year old Rachel versus almost 19 year old Rachel. I was not sure how it would have worked out, honestly because writing it in such a t detached way I would take months in between writing scenes was really difficult to sort of keep up with the momentum but I'm not unhappy with how it turned out I'm pretty happy with it I'm thinking I might submit it to my workshop come the coming semester so we'll see how that works out as for the other short story slaughter the animal I haven't worked on it since I worked on phantom limbs in D minor what happened is I was working on slaughter the animal outside. I was writing outside with a mom and my sister and we were having a really nice time out there. I was working on Slaughter the Animal and I was having a bit of trouble with it but then I got into the groove of it and then I got a little bit stuck while I was in the groove and so then for some reason I just felt compelled to work on Phantom Limbs in D minor and so then I just finished that story in that day, like that that night, I finished it because I knew if I didn't finish it that night, I never would finish the story. And so I finished it. Obviously, didn't continue working on Slaughter the Animal, so I haven't looked at it since I finished Phantom Limbs in D minor. But I figured out sort of what the concept actually is yesterday. Somebody tagged me in a game on Tumblr where I had to like describe my projects that I'm working on and I use that as one of the examples and sort of writing out a log line was really helpful. I'm not sure if execution is all there but it's kind of weird. I've never written with twins before and this story is about twins and so it's kind of bizarre. I you think I'd be a professional at this, but I, I think it's actually really difficult. It's harder than most people would think. You know, I'm a twin myself, but uh, I can't I can't do it for some reason. Even though my sister and I have a very close relationship, which is just like the twins in this story, I just I can't translate it very well. But you know, I'm still working on it. In terms of feeding habits, feeding habits has been giving me a lot of trouble since I started writing Harrison's point of view and left Lonan's point of view in about June or so, or was it July? It might have been early July that I finished Lona's point of view. It's just been giving me some trouble. It's mostly because it's Harrison's point of view. It's kind of like you're starting a new book because I haven't seen him in six months, which means he's gone through a lot. So lots of things have changed and I need to account for the things that have changed. So while I felt really comfortable in the project in Lonan's head, I'm not very comfortable in Harrison's head because it makes sense. I am only writing his first chapter right now. So I just have to continue working on that. I'm almost done this second with Reeve. I think I'm gonna have to do some revision on it because I, I think it needs it needs a little bit more but it's a very long chapter already it's 7,000 words and so I'm kind of sad about it because I'm not sure we'll see her again in this book and so while it was it was fun to write with her she's just kind of here for a cameo so um, I'm kind of trying to just enjoy her presence and yesterday I did a lot of rereading of book three which is actually I think my favorite fostered book. Book three I was reading and I was reading her interaction with Harrison and so it was really interesting to see their relationship in such a different context because you know that was more dystopian they were like saving each other's lives so reading that interaction was really interesting because right now they're still best friends but they haven't talked to each other in a long time she's upset with him he's upset with her and so it's kind of interesting to play around with the relationship that you know I once knew very well and that is in a different place now so I think I'm I'm getting to it I just need to to finish the scene honestly I've been working on one where Harrison and Reeve go to a fountain they jump into a garden and they go to the fountain to like give a water burial to this dead kitten that Harrison finds in his apartment I've been working on a scene where they are just sort of hanging out together there's a bit of tension because she feels he only is hanging out with her for an ulterior motive which could potentially be because he misses her brother who is alone in he is not ready to confront those feelings and then the chapter will probably be done after that because it's way too long at this point that's the update for now i will talk to you guys later the 
Giannobi, Pascal Siaka, Marcus. Good job of making things as difficult as possible throughout the entire contest. I'm happy right now. It's sleeping. It's sleepy? I'm sleeping. But I feel very warm. What? I feel very warm. Good. Okay. This is my toe. <laughs> This is more I have one. I feel like an Ava. Why do you ask me crazy, baby? Crazy, but not you. Maybe if I didn't know that I need some happiness. <laughs> I'm going to have my vlog. Is it funny? It is funny. Hi, sir. I'm going to have my woman to swim I feel nice. Hi everyone, so it's been a few weeks since I last updated you on writing and I have a few things to update you on. Number one, if I look like Alvin and the Chipmunks, like kind of pudgy, I got my wisdom teeth <laughs> removed, but it's the day after and I'm really not feeling any pain. I have done a few things since I last updated you. The last I was talking about Phantom Limbs in D minor, which I've decided to call Phantom Limbs. I was also talking about Slaughter the Animal, which is a short story and I actually finished it. So let me just talk to you about that pretty quickly. That story was giving me a bit of a hard time. I I originally started it at this high point. I had a burst of inspiration after feeling so bogged down. I couldn't write anything. I didn't feel inspired. I had no ideas. I was literally praying to the short story gods that I would get an idea. And then the idea for Slaughter the Animal came to me and I wrote the first 1200 words in one sitting and it was beautiful. It was magnificent. I loved every moment of it. And then I took a break for the night. The next day I came back and I couldn't write the story. I literally couldn't tap into it. I couldn't figure out what I wanted. I was getting confused with what I wanted the story to be. Originally, I thought it was going to be like a girlhood story where the main character, Dorothy, met this girl she wanted to be named Virginia. So the original story was that Dorothy moved from her hometown in Ontario to British Columbia. She moved with her mother after her parents' divorce. And I had written up until that point, they meet the people that they're gonna be living with at a boarding house, which uh, Dorothy's aunt knows a woman who runs a boarding house. She lives in the same city in British Columbia. And so they take a drive all the way from Ontario to British Columbia to live at this boarding house. And there they are first introduced to this girl named Virginia who helps them unpack their stuff and sort of get settled in the house. And so I had this interaction with Virginia and Dorothy in Virginia and Dorothy's mother that I was pretty happy with. But then, like I said, I went to bed. The next day I came back and I didn't really know what I was doing. I thought originally I wanted a girlhood story, but I couldn't figure it out. So Sarah and I went on a walk. And on the walk, I had discussed with her that Virginia had a twin brother. And it was kind of just a natural idea. This is how it, it kind of feels to be a pantser. You kind of just have instinctual ideas. I was telling Sarah, like, writing to me is not really a literacy experience. It's more so an artistic experience. It feels a lot like sculpting to me. So as a pantser, I experience writing in a very unique way. I experience writing a short story like Slaughter the Animal. It starts out as a giant rectangular block of soapstone. And writing to me as a pantser feels like chiseling away a sculpture. And so I'm kind of following a vague muse as I'm going through. And that's how I know my writing is going well, when I feel this muse 
carrying me away as I chip along into the sculpture and reveal the actual story. It doesn't actually feel like writing to me. When I'm really immersed in writing, it doesn't feel like writing. It feels like sculpting. My muse had sort of taken me on this idea of toying with twins. So I am a twin myself. I'm an identical twin. Sarah's my twin sister. I've never written with twins before. It kind of in the back of my mind was like, what if, what if G Ginny has a twin? Virginia goes by Ginny. Essentially, I followed that thread because my gut was telling me that that was correct. And so I came back and I wrote a scene where the twins and Dorothy were setting the table for dinner. Carver sitting on the table while the girls are setting uh, up like the silverware and stuff. And I hadn't introduced him before, but it just made more sense. But I still wasn't clicking with the story. I wasn't vibing with it. It was getting a little bit frustrating because I enjoyed so much writing the beginning. And so I kind of let it go. I kind of gave up on it. We wrote at night for a little bit. I was asking my mom for help. I was like, so it's these twins. What do you think? But I couldn't connect to it. And in that time where I couldn't connect to the story, I finished writing Phantom Limbs in D minor, which was awesome. And this was probably a week or so later. And something in me instinctually was like, open slaughter the animal because you're ready to finish it. And like I said, I, I often follow like a threads of a muse when I'm writing. Uh, writing is a very abstract form for me, and as I've gotten more comfortable in my own style, it has increasingly got even more abstract, where I'm kind of following this fantastical muse, and so my instincts, because I'm a pantser, my instincts I'm, are a very big part of my writing, and so I've learned to trust my instincts, and when my instinct told me to open the story, I open the story. I sat down and I finished the entire thing in one sitting. It went from about like 2,000 words to 4,400 words. All of the problems I was having before diminished. I was able to figure it out. My family had actually ordered food. It was a Friday night and we were watching the live action of Aladdin, which they'd already watched, but I'd never watched it. And I missed like the first 20 minutes of the movie, which I've never watched. Like I've never watched the Disney movies. I'm not a Disney person and we didn't grow up on Disney movies, but I just have to follow this muse. I was like, I'm following the muse. I'm following the muse. Like my grandma was like, do you want to like dish up your food? And I was like, I'm following the muse. I'm so sorry. So when it comes to writing, I definitely don't experience this almost catatonic state of inspiration. I, I very rarely feel that, but those are when I get the, the best words. And so when I knew that was coming on, because it's an instinctual feeling, I've been writing for six years. So I know when that feeling's coming on. I know not to let it go. So even if something's like gonna interrupt me, even if I like had plans, I usually will not let it go unless I direly have to because those moments are really rare and it was a fantastic writing session. I was really happy with how the story turned out. It's the first draft, but I think it's pretty clean. I think it's pretty strong. Might submit it to my writing workshop. I'm not really sure what I'm doing with it right now, but I'd love to publish it. I think it's really good. <laughs> In terms of feeding habits, I haven't done anything with feeding habits since the last time I updated you. I finished the scene with Harrison and Reeve and it ends on this like really sad boy note of Harrison like writing Lonan's name in the snow when a security guard wakes him up because they've jumped into a garden they're not supposed to be in, right? So security guard who's like going around is like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm so sad because I miss my man. And I started the next chapter, but I haven't looked at it in weeks because I was kind of working on short fiction. I was not really feeling feeding habits when I was writing it. Harrison's point of view has been really hard for me to break through. I'm, I'm trying. I was supposed to finish the book on July 30th, but by that time I was about 31,000 words in. So I'm actually on par with how fast I wrote moth work. I, I kind of feel more like writing short fiction. I've been on a short fiction kick mostly because like I finished two short stories. I know Phantom Limbs took me like over a year, but finishing it felt like I had written like a whole brand new story, even though I'd only written the latter half of it recently, um, but it kind of put me on a short fiction kick. So I've been thinking of a short story that I started last year about a cult. This girl essentially goes back to her childhood home that has been since bought by a new family, and I'm assuming the family is a cult, but I had a new idea for a title. I was brainstorming titles for a short story collection because I have enough short stories for a collection now. Well, like starting to build up a collection. I have like, I think five stories. And so I kind of had brainstormed a title called Blink Twice for Final Judgment. And I, I really liked that 
but I was like, I'm not sure if it'll work for the collections title, but I think this will work better for this cult story, which was originally called Anatomy of a Swinging Door, which like is more of a poem title. It doesn't really make sense for a short story title. So um, I think Blink Twice for Final Judgment works better. So I'm hoping I can maybe work on that. Honestly, I'm almost, I'm almost halfway through August and I, I kind of already made up my mind that I'm like done for the summer. I think this vlog has gone on for a long time. So I'm just gonna take the liberty to end it here. But thank you guys for watching this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for sticking around and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Okay, we have Doritos tacos and fries. <laughs> Dreams really do come true. Okay, bye.